Miracle City Church, it's Pastor Taurus Montgomery. Listen, I'm super excited to be able to share the Word of God with you on today. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. We serve a good God, a mighty God. I know it's crazy right now. I know COVID-19 seems like he's having his way. I understand that the coronavirus feel like she's in charge. Listen, at the end of the day, you and I both know that God is still in control. God is still large and in charge. God is still in the blessing business, even during a time of great crisis. So listen, we're going to look at the word today. And my prayer today is by the grace of God, the message that God has given me to give to you, that you'll be blessed by it, that you will be anchored by it in the Lord. Look, I want to give a shout out to all of our young people who are watching this right now. Listen, I understand that today is youth day. Come on, can we just, can we just celebrate our young people real quick? Can we just celebrate our young people real quick? Just give God thanks and praise for them. Let's pray for them during this time. They're at home, they're still in school, taking classes online. So we wanna pray for our young people that God will give them the ability to push on through, to stay locked in and stay focused in spite of the different circumstances under which they are now learning, all right? So I wanna lift up our young people in prayer. And then again, I want to shout out to uh, uh, your pastor, my good friend, uh, Pastor David Franklin. Shout out to you and your family, man, for this opportunity to be able to share the word of God with you. Look, I want to get into my message today. Uh, I'm sure you watch the news, right? You can't watch it too much or you find yourself depressed, right? But, but, but I'm sure many of you are paying attention to the news. You're watching the news. And just recently, like this week, there were a number of protests happening all throughout the country, right? People are getting in their vehicles and descending on the capital of their state. And it just recently happened in the state of Michigan where you had like 4,000 people, right? 4,000 people showed up in Lansing, Michigan, and they were protesting. They had their signs up, they had their flags, they're hunking the horn in their vehicles, in their trucks, in their cars. They're like taking to the streets and they're saying, listen, we need to reopen our economy. I understand COVID-19 is, 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 is doing what it's doing, but we need to get back to work again. We need to start back work. We need to get back, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they, are, they are raising their voice. They are protesting this issue. And you wonder, you ask the question like, wait a minute, man, these people got, you know, we've got stay home orders and people are outside still. Like what's, what's the deal with that? What's going on? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Here's what, here's what as I looked at that situation and I started thinking about the fact that the reason why they can go out and protest, the reason reason why they can go out and have their, their signs up and nobody get arrested. Why? Because in America, hear me now, as a citizen of the United States of America, you have certain rights and they understand their rights. You have the right to, uh, to freedom of speech. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to worship whoever you want to worship, however you want to worship. You have certain rights in the United States of America. You have the right to a, 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 a fair trial. There are certain rights that you have as citizens of these United States of America. And I stopped by here to tell you today that as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You have certain rights. You have certain rights that God has given you. And the first right that you have, the Bible says in John chapter one, verse 12 and 13, that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But those who received him and those who believed on his name, he gave them the right to be called the children of God. You are a child of the king and with being a child of the king, and a citizen of the kingdom, I stopped by to tell you today that you have some rights. And what the enemy wants to do is the enemy wants you to operate in a spirit of fear. He wants you to operate in a spirit of worry and anxiety and stress so that you do not exercise those rights in the moment of crisis, so that you do not exercise those rights when chaos is going on. But I stopped by to tell you today, listen, God has a word for his people and I've entitled this message, show me your ID, or rather, where is your ID? Do me a favor, bow your heads and close your eyes as we go to the Lord and ask his spirit to bless our time together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are grateful 
for the privilege and the honor of being your children. Lord, the reality is, is that some of us don't fully understand what that means. And Lord, it's my prayer today that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight and encouraging to your people and help us to understand what it means that we are now in Christ, O oh God, and how that how that, how that uh, carries out in our everyday lives, Father. Bless us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen and amen. Where is your ID? It was a night I'll never forget. I'm riding in a vehicle. I got some friends in the car with me. And as we're driving, you know, we got music playing. We're doing our thing. I'm just 16 years old at the time. And all of a sudden, I see blue lights flashing in my rear view mirror. You already know what time it is. I'm just driving now. And you know how when you see the police behind you, you kind of ease off the gas a little bit. So I ease off the gas a little bit. And slowly but surely, he began to signal to me with the little whoop, 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 right? You know, not just, not only do you have the, the flashing lights going on, but you got the, the noise coming out now, the sirens coming out now, and I know that he's talking to me to pull over, right? So I pull over to the side, and as I pull over to the side, stop the vehicle, put it in park, the officer now is approaching the vehicle. And as he's approaching the vehicle, he knocks on my window, asks me to roll the window down, and the very first thing he asks me for, of course, is, where is your ID, right? Now, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. When I rolled down the window, he asked me, where's my ID? Unfortunately, I didn't have any ID. I'm 16 years old. I'm legally able to drive, but you have to have some driver's license, right, to be able to identify yourself in moments like these so that you don't get a ticket or go to jail or whatever, right? So I didn't have any ID, right? But unfortunately, what I did was, being immature, being young, I gave him some fake ID. I didn't give him a fake ID card, but I gave him a fake name. I know, I know, I was young, all right? He go back to his car, pull out the laptop, right? You looking in the mirror, you know what I'm saying? You just trying to, you hoping. And look, I'm just knowing now I'm about to get in trouble. I'm about to go to jail. My mama going to be mad at me. My daddy going to be mad at me. I'm going to be in jail with the grown people. Like, man, I, I'm too young. I'm too skinny to go to jail, right? So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all nervous and afraid. And as I am waiting on the police officer, I'm telling my, my boy, man, y'all be quiet, shut up, you know what I'm saying, nobody say nothing, right? Now, we weren't doing anything, like we didn't have any, any drugs or anything like that on us in the car, but, but the fact that I didn't have any ID and I gave him a fake name, I'm, I'm, I'm scared now, right? So he come back to the car. And when he get back to the car, he asked me to step out, right? I step out of the vehicle, and listen, guys, he looked me dead in my face, and he said, you're free to go. I said, I'm free to go? You, you, you're free to go. Now listen, guys, listen, listen. While I may have been happy and excited to get back in my car and drive off, which I was, right? As I reflect on that experience, as I look back on that situation in my life, I realize that there was a moment of tragedy. And the reason why it was a moment of tragedy is because somewhere deep down within, I began to think that I can go through life and when life pulls me over, when situations happen, I don't have to know who I am. I can make up some character and be somebody else. In other words, I began to live my entire life from 16 to 19, really uh, 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 operating outside of who I really was. And when you don't know who you really are, it's easy to start smoking. It's easy to start drinking. It's easy to get to partying all the time. It's easy to want to put on so you can be accepted by other people. It's easy. Listen to me. It was easy for me to fall to the devil's traps and temptations. Why? Because I didn't know who I was. And I imagine that there are some young people right now. I imagine that there are some adults right now who are living a life that's not really who you are. 
It's not really who God created you to be. You're not operating in your true self. You're not operating in your authentic self. You are not living according to the person that God shaped, the person that God had in mind when he created you. You are living a lot. You are living with somebody else's ID. And I stopped by to tell you today that God didn't give you that ID. The enemy gave you that ID. It's time to exchange it for some new ID. And I begin to think about, I begin to think about, man, why is it that I, I, I started smoking uh, weed at 12 years old, right? Why is it that, that, that I, I got to drinking and, and, and partying and, and getting suspended from school and, and, and getting kicked out of class? And uh, why, why is it that I'm wasting my athletic opportunity? Why is it that, that, that I'm making bad decisions? Why is it that my grades are, 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 are lower than what my capabilities are? I'm asking myself, why is this, right? So, so what I did was, I took some time to reflect on the root of the problem when it comes to uh, uh, living and operating in a, with, with, with a false ID, right? And here's what I did. I'm going to go to the board real quick, right? I want to do a little teaching for a moment, right? So watch this, guys. Watch this. Where my marker at? So, so, so let, me, let me take this off real quick. Take this here off real quick, yep. And then I got, we're going to get to the root of the problem because I want to show you, all right? I want to show you some things so that, so that you'll know how to deal with it, all right? So my, 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 my artistry, right? My artisticness, uh, uh, put the stick man figure up here, okay? We're just going to go with the stick man today, all right? So listen, so here's what happened, guys. What happened is when you were a baby, right? When you were a baby, or during your adolescent years, or your teenage years, or even during your adulthood, right? This is kind of like the cycle of life, or the se or seasons of life, all right? And so this is you right here. This is me right here. So here's what happens. What happens is the people, the environment, and the experiences that we have, they end up shaping us into thinking a certain way, believing certain things about ourselves, and oftentimes those things are not things that God has said about us. Okay? So let me, let me, let me, let me break that down a little bit. So when we talk about people, right, these people, there were people who poured into you, right? And sometimes the things that they poured in were poisonous to your identity, in other words, in other words, there were things that your mama said. There were things that your daddy did. There was something that your uncle did to you. There was something that your auntie said to you. There was something that the bully spoke to you. There was something that happened in your teenage years or your adolescent years or your adult years that began to shape your thinking about yourself. And those things were lies influenced by the enemy. Yep, yep, yep. Or maybe it wasn't the people. Maybe it was the environment, right? Maybe it was the environment that you grew up in. Maybe, maybe, maybe the household that you grew up in, it was a household where everybody was bitter, everybody was anger, bunch of negativity. Maybe it was a neighborhood where it was gang banging, it was, it, was, it, was, it was violence, it was drug infested. And the way that people dealt with issues was they used violence, they used anger, they used aggression to solve their problems. So you want to fight anytime somebody some, something happens, right? You want to give somebody a piece of your mind every time something happens, right? That that's because that's because this this influence your your thinking about who you are. So you 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 call yourself a fighter, right? Not in a positive way, but in a like I want to put them up and I want to swing on somebody way, right? So so or, or maybe you've had now some experiences that that some things that happened, somebody took advantage of you. You were molested or your parents may have abandoned you when you were a child. They put you up for adoption and so you feel like nobody loves you. You feel unlovable. You feel like you don't have any worth or any value in your life. And so as a result now, you have, watch this guy, you have all of these, you have all of these uh, 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 negative and faulty beliefs about yourself. And this is what these things do, right? This is what these things do. These things right here, they give you a set of, watch this, they give you a set of, of lens. Put the glasses on. You probably can't see the glasses, but I got something for you, right? They give you a set of lens whereby you view the world whereby you interpret life. So, so, so let me give you an example right here. Let me give you an example right here, right? So I got these lenses right here, right? So, so ooh, 
come on now, come on, come on, come on. Now watch this, watch this. What happens is, what happens is, now, 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 I'm looking at, because of these things right here, right? These things have shaped my perspective. They've shaped the way that I look at life, the way that I view life, the way that, I, so, so now, so now when I get into a relationship with somebody and the relationship is not working out, I'm not seeing eye to eye to that person. It's usually because that person has a different set of lenses on than you do. Right. When it comes to money, how you manage money and how they manage money or how you manage money and you buy yourself, you ain't in no relationship Well, your perspective or your view on money has been shaped by the people that you grew up around, the environment that you grew up in and the experiences that you had. What you eat, what you drink, whether you exercise or not, the stuff, look, I grew up on junk food. I'm talking about I'm eating Kit Kat bars and Twix and Snickers, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just pure junk food, potato chip, you know what I'm saying, soda pop, pop, however you want to call it, right? Drink, that's where I'm from. We call it drink, right? So, 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 so now, so now, every, listen to me, every aspect of my life is being shaped now by these things right here. Right. And that is where your identity comes from. That's where who you are is developed. And if you have some jacked up experiences right here, if you have some bad experiences right here, if you had if all of this in your life was just bad, then guess what? You're going to have a very bad perspective. Now, look, here's the crazy thing. Right. Here's the crazy thing. While I may look cool and fly, you know what I'm saying? I got my shades on or whatever. I'm, I'm rocking it out. While I may look like I'm having fun, I'm in the party all the time. I keep some money in my pocket, right? The reality is, deep within, I'm still hurting. The reality is, is that deep within, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. Deep within, I don't value myself. Deep within, I, I'm, 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 I'm angry with the world. And here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. The good news. Come on, somebody say the good news. The good news is that is that Jesus. Come on, say amen. Jesus. Jesus. When he died on the cross. Right. When he died on the cross. Let's put, we're going to put Jesus on the cross right there. Right. Stretch them arms out. Boom, boom. Nailed to the cross. When Jesus died on the cross now, what Jesus does. Well, but even before he died on the cross, what Jesus does is Jesus lived a, uh, a, a life from a baby. Right. Uh, to his adolescent years. Oh, come on. To his teenage years. Come on. To his adulthood. Right. And all of it. Hallelujah. All of it was perfect. All of it was flawless. He had a life that he lived. He had some teachings that he taught, right? And, and, then, and then he sacrificed himself. And here's what he says. He says, hey, listen, Tars. He says, hey, listen, Miracle City. He says, hey, listen, Harb of Hope. He says, hey, I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear me. I want to make an exchange with you. I want to make an exchange with you. And here's the exchange. I'm going to give you my perfect, hallelujah, I'm going to give you my perfect life in exchange for all of these issues that you have. And in the process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a new set. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give you a new set of lenses. That's right. I'm going to give you a new set of lenses. Oh, I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. I can see clearly now uh, it's not dark anymore. I look, yeah, I know you look cool or you you thought you looked cool, but the reality is you were walking in darkness. You were walking in darkness. You were walking in the middle of the night and you ain't know where you were going. And the reason why is because it's because although you saw you had a messed up seeing. But now you got a new set of lens. Now you interpret things a little bit different. Now your view is a little bit not now you're not now you're not getting frustrated in the relationship when the person don't see things as you see it because both of y'all not see it as Christ see it. Come on, say amen. Now, when you look at money, you understand that it's not just for trying to keep up with the Jones. It's not for that at all, actually. But uh, but but but, but it, it's for it's for the building up of the kingdom of God. It's for taking care of my life's necessities. It's for being a blessing to other people. Now, when I look at when I go to the grocery store, I'm going to the produce. Section. Come on, say amen. I ain't. I, I'm not. I'm not in the junk food section anymore. I'm going to uh, to 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 to, uh, to feed my body those things that are gonna bless my body and my mind and my spirit, so I can be healthy for the glory of God. Right, right, right. So God, God, God makes this exchange. He gives us a new set of lenses uh, for for us to be able to see things from His perspective. Now, now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is why the Bible says. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. Come on, say amen out there. All things have become brand new. It goes on to say in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. Let me give you some Bible. The Bible says, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, watch this, here in the new self, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. You should have said amen right there. Listen, guys, listen. What I want to do for the next couple of moments is I want, to, I want to help us understand who we are in Christ. In Christ, come on, somebody, you are accepted. Oh, man, you are, you are accepted. The Bible says, in fact, you are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1 and verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which God made us, what's that? Accepted in the beloved. In other words, in other words, when we made that decision, when we made that decision that we were going to take what Christ has done and accept it for our lives, listen to me, God looks at us now and accepts us. All of our issues, come on, say amen. All of our problems, all of our faults, all of our troubles, all of our setbacks, all of the hurt that we've been through, the bad places that we've lived and the things that we've experienced, the Bible lets us know that God, hear me now, accepts us. Why is this important? This is important, guys, and this is significant because of this. Watch this. See, some of you right now, you have experienced rejection time and time and time again in your life. First day of school, you show up and you, you, had, the fresh, you had fresh clothes on. You made sure that your mom got you the best outfit, right? But you still weren't accepted by the quote unquote in crowd. Right. You, you, you even at church sometimes. Right. If, if, if you can't if you can't sing well, if you can't perform well, if you can't do something spectacular or significant uh, in other people's eyes, then you're not get, you, you don't get accepted. Right. Some of you, you, you apply for a position and, and, and I'm talking about the position had your name on it. Like you got you be all of the qualifications, but they gave it to Becky with the good hair. Why? Because because for whatever reason, they rejected you. Right. You got you got you, 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 you got you got a school, your dream school. You wanted to get into that school, but unfortunately, you didn't get in. Uh, they rejected you. Right. And some of us hear me. Some of us have been rejected by our own parents, our own mom, our own dad. There are so many young men growing up in our society today whose hearts have become hard and they're, and, and, and they're filled with anger, not because they're a thug, not because they're some bad boy, but because they didn't get the kiss on the forehead when they were six years old and seven years old from their father. So there's some anger and aggression right now. Why? Because feelings of being rejected. Nobody likes to be rejected. Can I tell you something? Here's a good news. Here's a good news, saints. The good news is that, is that God accepts us exactly as we are, who we are, whatever our issue is, whether we are gay or straight, whether we are black or white, whether we are rich or poor, whether we came from the hood or grew up in the suburbs, at the end of the day, none of that stuff matters to God because God looks at you and accepts you as his child. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Come on, say amen. Yes, he does. Listen, I'm thinking about the passage in scripture where, where, where Jesus where Jesus is getting baptized. This is why I love it. Where Jesus is getting baptized and he comes up out of the water and the Bible says these words that God spoke from heaven. And this is what God said. God said, this is my beloved son whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. Now, here's why that's powerful. That's powerful because at this point, Jesus has not performed a miracle. He hasn't turned any water into wine. He hasn't walked on water. He hasn't fed 5,000. In other words, he hasn't done any miraculous 
performance, but I'm so glad that God's love and God's acceptance is not based on performance, but it's based on how Jesus has already performed on the cross. The reason why God accepts us uh, as who we are and for who we are is not because of anything that we have done, but because of everything that his son has done. You ought to say amen. 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 Listen, 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 listen. So, so the first thing I need you to understand that hear me, God, hear me in Christ, you are accepted. Number two, not only are you accepted in Christ, but the word of God teaches, hear me, the word of God teaches that you are anointed in Christ. Come on, somebody. You are anointed in Christ. God has anointed you. That's right. I'm talking to you. You have been anointed by God. That's right. I know that you didn't, you, I know that at church you didn't go down front and they didn't lay hands on you and they didn't put no oil on you. I understand that, but I still need you to know that you are are anointed. That's right. The Bible says these words. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from God remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. The Bible says, listen, you are anointed. Do you understand what it means to be anointed? To be anointed means that, that to, 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 be, to be set apart for a special use, to be set aside for a special purpose. God, listen to me, God has placed his hand on you. God has chosen you and God has anointed you. And that anointing is not just with oil, but that anointing is with the Holy Spirit. God, hear me now, God has given you the Holy Spirit and God says that the Holy Spirit will teach you and show show you and guide you and lead you in all of your decision making and help you understand who you are with this new identity that you have in Christ. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you have the Holy Spirit, hear me. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have you have authority. You have power. You have you have wisdom. You have you have you have everything that you need. The Holy Listen, the Holy Ghost is the secret weapon. The Holy Ghost is a secret weapon. I, I, I remember, I remember that there was this, there was, there was this commercial. They used to come on when I was, uh, when I was a little younger, right? And, 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 and I remember watching this commercial. You know, everybody used to watch this commercial, right? It was a, it was a commercial, uh, a, a Gatorade commercial, uh, and, and they used to sing this song, right, uh, about Michael Jordan, right? Like Mike. If I could be like Mike, sometimes I dream that he is me. And you got to see that's how I dream to be. Sometimes uh, she said, I, I dream I move. I dream I groove like Mike. If I could be like Mike. But hear me now, in the center of this commercial, in the center of this commercial, what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell you this Gatorade. They're trying to sell you this Gatorade because the Gatorade, hear me now, the Gatorade is the thing that Michael Jordan is drinking all throughout the commercial while they're doing these moves and while, they're, uh, while he's grooving and flying through the air. Michael Jordan is, 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 is drinking this Gatorade and the Gatorade, hear me now, the Gatorade now is, is, is supposed to give you the, uh, uh, it's supposed to quench your thirst. Uh, it's supposed to re-energize you. It's supposed to get you back to going when you get exhausted. And I'm here to tell you today that the Holy Ghost is what God has, 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 has given to his people. And at the end of the question uh, with the Gatorade uh, uh, commercial, uh, they asked the question, uh, is it in you? Is the Gatorade in you? Have you consumed the Gatorade? Have you uh, taken in the Gatorade? I stopped by to ask you today, have you taken in your anointing and the meaning of that anointing that God has placed in your life and placed on your heart and given you the power to overcome sin, the power to have victory in your life, the power to overcome pornography, the power to overcome uh, negativity, the power to break bad habits, the power to get rid of bad people in your life. The Holy Spirit has anointed you. Have you received the anointing? Not only has God anointed you with power, but he has appointed you with a purpose. That's right. In Christ, 
You are appointed. You have been appointed with purpose. And God has a specific assignment. Hear me now. He has a specific assignment with your name on it. There is a specific task that God wants you to do. There is some homework. I know you in school. I know you at home doing your work right now. But there is still some homework. There's still an assignment that God wants you to do even during these times right here. COVID-19 doesn't change your anointing nor your appointing. COVID-19 doesn't change the assignment that God has given you. As a matter of fact, if anything, it ought to cause you to begin thinking more about the assignment that God has given you. You have been anointed and appointed. Let's look at what the word of God says. The Bible says these words in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. As though God were making his appeal through us. Isn't that amazing? Like God, God decided, God said, listen, God said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to give you, first of all, I'm going to accept you. Uh, and, 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 and then I'm going to anoint you with power. And then I'm going to appoint you with purpose. I have an assignment for you. I remember when I first given my life to God, right? First given my life to God, brand new Christian, about three day old Christian, right? And I'm in my dormitory room. And, uh, you know, prior to this, I'm wilding out at the club with my friends. I'm partying, getting sloppy drunk, just all kind of crazy stuff, right? Not living my purpose because I ain't know who I was, right? But when I made that decision to give my life to Christ, to take on his new identity, what happened was I remember one night, guys, listen, I was in my room. And it's, it's late, like probably 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. I had been reading the word of God for like six, seven, eight hours straight. You know what I'm saying? But, 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 but I got to a point where, um, uh, some, for, for, for whatever reason, I decided that I was going to go and, and, and look at the book of Genesis, right? I'm looking at the book of Genesis. I had been doing some Bible studies, like amazing fact study guys and, and, and some, you know, some stuff like that or whatever. And then I decided, you know what, let me, I'm about to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I was, I'm talking about on fire for the Lord, right? So I started reading. And as I started reading, I came to the verse, Genesis chapter uh, 1, verse 26, 27. And the verse says, let us make man. Now, listen to me. I'm a brand new Bible uh, 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 reader, right? I'm a brand new Christian, three days old, walking with the Lord. And I get to this part that says, let us make man. I'm confused. What do you mean by us? Who is us? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, like and, and so immediately in a moment of confusion, I get scared. I start doubting. And the moment I started doubting, I just felt like the enemy was just like standing over me and start speaking all kinds of doubt and negativity into my mind, into my spirit, into my soul, to the point where I was on the verge of just quitting and giving up on God. And then the Holy Ghost hit me. And listen to me, guys, I dropped down on my knees in my room. And I started crying out, God, please. Please help me, God. I don't want to go back to that lifestyle. I, I don't want to abandon you, God. You've been so good to me, God. Please, God, help me. Give me understanding, God. Listen to me. I did that, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I'm just crying out to God. And by the time I got up, oh, man, by the time I got up, I walked outside of my dormitory room to go use the bathroom in the hallway. And as I get out in the hallway, I see two guys, they out there shooting dice. Now, I used to shoot dice with them all the time. So they asked me, they said, yo, T, man, come get on this dice game with us. And I looked at them guys, I said, man, listen, you know, man, I don't, I don't gamble no more, man. You know, I said, gambling is a sin. I didn't even know what gambling is a sin. I just said it, right? I said, gambling is a sin. They was like, for real? And they was like, yeah. And I said, look, and, and, and I said, as a matter of fact, man, you know what I'm saying? The word of God, God wants you to use your money to do something positive rather than you. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what, I, I just told them something. You know, I'm, I'm three days, I'm three day old Christian, so I'm just speaking what I know, right? And watch this, guys. That conversation, oh man, that conversation went from me talking to two guys and them asking me questions about the word of God to four guys. And then it went from four guys to, 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 to eight guys. And then eight to 16. And by, listen to me, by the time, you know, within an hour or so, the whole dorm, the whole boys' dorm, they right there sitting on the step, some sitting on the step, some sitting on the floor, some standing up, some posted up against the wall. And I'm just, I'm just sharing. Watch this. Everything that I had learned from those six, seven, 
hours of reading and studying, amazing facts study. I'm talking about, I'm letting them have, I'm, 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 I'm giving them my best uh, 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 C.D. Brooks, my best Doug Bastard question and answer thing going on. I'm just a three-day-old Christian, and they stand up there listening to me and looking at me, and watch this. When it was all said and done, I prayed with them, and they go back to their dorms. They dapping me up like, man, I appreciate that, man. I receive that, man. Man, God bless you, bro. What you doing, man? I see the change made in your life. You look like you're a whole different person, a whole new person. And when I go back into my dormitory room, when I go back in my room, I close my door. I'm talking about I'm praising God. I'm blessing God. God, and God says, listen, son, this is your appointment. This is your purpose. I have, a, I have called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And I want to talk to some young man who's listening right now. I want to speak to some young lady who's watching right now. What I need you to understand is that no matter what you have been through, no matter what your past has been, the moment you accepted Christ and he gave you that new identity, he gave you, he, he gave you uh, uh, the anointing, he, gave you, he accepted you, but he also has an assignment for you. He has anointed you and appointed you for an assignment. Do you know what your assignment is? Are you fulfilling that assignment? At the end of the day, can I tell you what your assignment is? At the end of the day, your assignment, hear me, your assignment is to serve. That's right. That's right. I don't know who, I don't know what people group you're serving, but your assignment is to serve. Maybe it's single mothers in your community. Your assignment is to serve. Maybe it's young men growing up without a father. Your assignment is to serve. Maybe it's young men in prison, older men in prison. Your assignment is to serve. Maybe it's little kids teaching them about uh, 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 computers. Uh, your your assign. I don't, I don't, I don't know what your assignment is or who the people group is. But what I do know is that God has anointed you and appointed you to serve for his kingdom. Paul says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. And finally, here's the last one. In Christ, you have access. Who? In Christ, hear me now, hear me, hear me. In Christ, you have been given access. You've been given access. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me, let me show you something real quick, right? So, so not too long ago, right? What has happened like last year or sometime, uh, uh, I had the chance to go to an uh, NBA basketball game, right? And, and, and when I get to this NBA basketball game, I didn't go, hear me now, I didn't go uh, with, with regular tickets, you know what I'm saying? I didn't go with regular tickets. Uh, I went uh, with a pass, right? I had a pass, and the pass has uh, a name on it. Come on, somebody. It has a name on it of one of the players who played for the Chicago Bulls, right? So, so when we show up, not, not having gone to a Chicago Bulls game before, when we show up, I go into the, to the main entrance, to the main door, one of the main doors, and I go to the counter and I ask the people, you know, how can I, you know, where, where do I go in at? And they said, I'm sorry, sir, but, uh, but you came in the wrong way, right? There's another way. You go out, you, go, you, you exit out here and you go around here. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a special place uh, uh, for people who have that kind of pass that you have. Are you listening to me? And so we go now, we go now, and when we go around, we bypass a whole bunch of people. We get to go to a specific location, a specific spot. And here's the thing, guys, here's the thing. As I'm going through now, as I'm going through now, the people who are looking at me, when they see, oh man, when they see the past that I have, they give me access to what other people around me going to watch the same game, but they don't get the same access. Hear me now. They don't, they, they're going to watch the same game, going into the same building, but they don't have the kind of access that I have because of the past that I have, because of the name, hear me now, because of the name that's on the past. It's not my name on the past, but it's the name name of the player who has the authority, who has the power to give me a pass that I can bypass some stuff that other people have to go through that I don't have to go through. Why? Because I have access uh, to the pass. Come on. Because I have the pass. I want you to understand that God has given you a pass. And that pass
Jazz has granted you access. You don't have to deal with the coronavirus the same way that the people who don't confess Jesus Christ as Lord are dealing with the coronavirus. You don't have to have the fears. You don't have to have the worries. You don't have to have the anxieties. You don't have to have all the issues that come along with living in this crazy world. You don't have to have all of those experiences. As a matter of fact, God looks at your past and says, I've given you a new past, and the new past gets you new identity, and the new identity gives you some authority and some access that everybody else don't have. Why? Because you're my child. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become brand new. The Bible says, watch this, watch this. I want to, I want to put some Bible on this. The Bible says, the Bible says, according to the eternal purpose, which, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord, uh, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Ephesians 3, chapter 11 and 12. Where is your ID? Where is your ID? I remember I had to go get some new ID because my old ID expired. I said, oh, that's a word right there. My old ID expired. My old life expired. Your old life expired. When you decided to give your life to Jesus, can I tell you something? Your old life expired. All that stuff that you've been expired. Where is your ID is my prayer that your ID, that your identification, that your identity is found in none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Listen, I have a resource for you. It's free, absolutely free. You go to TaurusMontgomery.com, you download it, and it has 33 promises of who you are in Christ. 33 promises of who you are in Christ. Access it, download it, read it, believe it, receive it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I pray that you were blessed by this message. We'd love to connect with you beyond this moment. So I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you'll get updates on when a new sermon is posted, as well as when we go live during our worship experiences uh, on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Uh, also, you can connect with us on social media. You can go to Facebook or Instagram and look for Miracle City Church. And on Twitter, you can find us at Miracle City Life. We really do believe that God's doing something special in this congregation and in this family. And we're so blessed that you've chosen um, to connect with us. And if you've been blessed and you want to be a blessing, we invite you to go to our website. You can find all the information for giving there by going to miraclecitychurch.org slash give. And we know the Lord will bless you for your generosity. Thank Thanks so much for being part of what God is doing here, and we pray many blessings on your life.